Hey everyone, Aisha here. So last week we were talking about what do you do when your life is interrupted and you're going to be a single mom. And so I said last week that there was an eighth thing that I wanted to share and that I would make it its own standalone video because there was so much to that point. And so the eighth point, and so just a reminder, we were going through the book of Acts and also really our anchor verse was the scripture where Paul meets Jesus um, on the road um, you know, to Damascus, right? He has an encounter with Jesus. His eyes are blinded. And then um, he experiences a radical uh, transformation from being a persecutor of the church to being one of the greatest evangelists and apostles uh, that, you know, the world has seen, right? And so he went through a major transformation from becoming, from being Saul and turning to Paul. So I highly encourage you to watch part one of this video because um, this is a part two to that. And so what I want to share for that is for this video, I want to go to Acts 22 because remember we were um, jumping around through Acts. And so, so Paul is in Jerusalem at this point. He is brought up in front of a tribune, right? And they're throwing all these accusations against him. And Paul begins to speak and he begins to defend himself and introduce himself. He says, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Sicilia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict matter of the law, our fathers being zealous for God as all as you are to this day. And so then he talks about his history of persecution, really building up his resume for who he is, right? And why he's so serious about this transformation and how if anyone should be able to, you know, if Paul can open his eyes and see that the scriptures point to this Messiah, like then, you know, they should be able to see it too, like, right? And so one of the interesting things that um, I shared in the part one is how he was warned before he went to Jerusalem that if he went to Jerusalem, he was going to be bound up and turned over as a prisoner, but he went anyway. And so part of the way that you reason why we understand why he went anyway is because he was laser focused on the mission, but he was laser focused on the mission. And this is point eight, right? He kept looking forward. He, instead of focusing on what he lost, right? Because people, when they look at Paul, put the people, his contemporaries probably thought he was crazy because he had very high stature. He came from a family that had a high stature. He came from a line of Pharisees. Um, he most likely had wealth, right? And so why would someone like Paul give up everything that he had to become despised, persecuted, beaten, and, you know, um, just persecuted for the way, which is Christ. And so Paul goes on to talk about his resume and who he is and why he has the credibility that he has and why his words carry the weight that they have when he's talking about that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I want to go to Philippians 3. It's a lot, right, that I want to read through. So go to Philippians 3, 4. And it says, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, a tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as the zeal persecutor of the church, as righteous as the righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. And then he goes on to say in verse 13 and 14, and this is super powerful. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. 
made it my own. But the one thing I do is forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And Paul teaches us a couple of things that were very, very powerful in this. And the first thing is he reframed what he lost. And so what others might have counted um, the things that he lost, he he doesn't, it doesn't face him. It doesn't bother him. Matter of fact, he lists all of these accolades, right? All of these things that will beef up his resume, that will cause other people to be very impressed by him, that will cause a lot of respect within the Jewish community. And he said that he counts everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ. And so we can learn something in here because when we experience an unplanned pregnancy or we become single moms, right, there is a very strong temptation to look at the past in terms of what we had. I know I did that, right? I did that. And it was very hard to move forward when you keep counting your the things that you had in the past. Matter of fact, um, the Lord just took me through this process where I ended up donating some of my favorite furniture, favorite furniture, because it was stuff that I had, you know, before I had my kids. And because some of these pieces of furniture were very expensive, I realized that I was still holding on to the life that I had before kids, counting all of that um, higher than it needed to be because I was looking at that and it was causing almost a longing of the past, kind of like Lot's wife. Oh, back then, you know, my money was so, you know, a lot, right? My bank accounts looked this way. Things looked this way, right? It almost what became a stumbling block and a place of backwardsness for me. But when I let it all go, I began to have freedom because even though, you know, I, I'm, you know, my kids are eight now. So this is eight years ago. I'm still holding on to this stuff, right? And sometimes when we hold on to stuff, it can be a barrier to us moving forward in the life that God has us to live. As a matter of fact, I was talking to, you know, a friend of mine and I was just like, you know, I'm really struggling. Like, I, I really feel like the Lord is calling me to get rid of this stuff. And I realized, you know, what an anchor to the past it is on my soul, but it's expensive, you know, it, it, and it's just like, you know, it just reminds me of a win. And she was just like, you got to get rid of it. And so she went through that same process. The Lord took her on a similar process. And she was just like, look, it's going to be better once you let it all go, because you're going to open yourself to up to allow God to do something new in your life. And that's what you need. And I think that there's a temptation to look back at the relationship that is gone, some of the friendships that are gone, um, some of the finances that might look different, right? Um, some of the fears related to career. And we can begin to think, is this possible? possible? We can begin to feel overwhelmed or we can begin to live in a place in the past which prevents us from moving forward. And so we need to be able to adopt a mindset like Paul did when he said for his sake, he has left for the, suffered the loss. For your kids' sake, right? For your kids' sake to be able to birth these beautiful humans in the world, you might have suffered the loss of some things, but those things really don't matter within the greater context of you now stepping into your role as mom and moving forward in this new season, this role and responsibility and honor. In your life, you have to begin to count the past as rubbish. Let it go. Not because it wasn't cool. Not because, you know, it didn't matter. But it's no longer relevant to the life that you have right now. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Because what's better in front of you is what's in front of you is going to be better than what lies behind. And so the next thing that he said was he forget what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. So that's an intentionality. It's a process. He's leaning forward. He's fixing his eyes on the past. Remember, Jesus actually says, remember Lot's wife. You know, Lot, his daughters and his wife, they were fleeing from Sodom and Gomorrah right as the angels were beginning to rain down fire, brimstone and sulfur, bringing Sodom and Gomorrah to total destruction. And so what happened was the angels were like, don't look back, don't look back. But Lot's wife's heart was to Sodom. 
she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt, a more a, 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 a memorial for what it means to be stuck in a place of backwardness and a refusal to move forward to what God is calling us from. And so we have to forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead because what lies ahead is better than what lies in the past. And what is that forward? I press on towards the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And we also have to remember Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, right? So we have to be able to anchor ourselves in the promises of God, which tells us that all things are going to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his promise. And when we know that what we're straining towards is good, it makes it easier for us to forget what lies behind not because we're forgetting in our mind right it's because it no longer carries the weight that it did in the past we're no longer shackled to the past we're no longer trying to be who we used to be but we're an open book allowing the lord to write a new story for our lives write a new story for our kids lives we're malleable in the hand of the lord to mold us into who we need to be to glorify him to be the best moms that we can be for our children to raise our kids in the way that brings the lord glory and honor and to ultimately glorify the lord while also doing the work that he has called us to do because he has already created in us um, a perfect plan and a perfect person and for me a perfect plan and a perfect perfect person purpose and for many of us that also means doing having goals dreams and things out in addition to motherhood right motherhood is our first ministry so our priorities are god our children and then the things that god has for us you know as single moms right and I say it like, and if we were married, it'd be God, husband, children, right? But because we're not married, it's God, children, you know, um, the stuff that God has for us to do, right? And But in order for us to be able to fully be able to be surrendered to the pathway that God has, we have to untangle ourselves from the, the things of the past. We have to reframe what we lost and we have to keep looking forward and that is how you can deal with an interruption to your life and you're becoming a single mom because we're letting go of the past and allowing God to move us into a future a new future and give yourself grace because it's hard it's totally normal to shed a lot of tears it's totally normal to be wondering like, well, God, what's next? But be open to allowing him to guide you. Be open to allowing him to heal you. Be open to allowing him to rewrite your story and to make him, make you new. I remember when, um, when I got pregnant and I became a single mom. So before I got pregnant, I um, had a personal finance um, blog and business where I taught workshops based upon personal finance. I still do teach personal finance, right? So I still have the blog, right? So I still do that stuff, right? And, um, and so before I had my kids, I was teaching personal finances to women who are in corporate didn't usually have kids right but um teaching them how to manage their money so that way they can achieve their financial goals right and i wrote a whole book um about right living a you know balling lifestyle on a budget right and so being able to put that money that you save into the things that um are your financial goals that allow you to you know build greater financial health right and so that's what i did and when I became a single mom, I was still doing that and helping the women with their finances. But I felt this calling to be able to change my blog and my, my business focus to helping single moms manage their money. Because I realized that if I was having some challenges and difficulties as someone who has a corporate finance background, I have an MBA in finance, I have, um, you know, a bachelor's in economics, I have a certification um, of financial planning, personal financial planning. So I have a very strong financial background. 
And so I realized that if I was struggling financially, then and things that I knew I just wasn't doing because just of emotional things and other things and having to restructure my entire life, it was very hard. It was overwhelming. I figured that how was somebody going to make it who didn't have that same training as me? And I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me to serve single moms instead of these women in corporate that, that don't have kids, right? And so I allowed God to move me. There were times where I wanted to go back and just serve the more general women population. But every time I wanted to do that, God kept moving me back to the single moms to be in a place of service to these women who are trying to move forward in their lives after becoming a single mom, right? And so we have to be willing to let go of the old to be able to make room for the new because you never know how God is leading you. You never know how God is impacting you. Matter of fact, um, I spoke at March for Life. I was one of the speakers at March for Life. And so I never would have, <laughs> I couldn't have like came up with that on my own, <laughs> like, I couldn't have, I, like, I didn't, I don't even know if I could have dreamt that big, right, to have that type of opportunity, I would have never thought <laughs> to dream that, right, but, but God saw it fit to put me on that stage, to be able to share my testimonial with hundreds of thousands of people about how I chose life when I was pressured to have an abortion, right, but a key to be able to move forward, and it took me a very long time to learn this lesson, was I had to forget the past. I had to let go of the past. I had to operate in forgiveness. I had to say, you know what? This stuff, remember I just talked about letting go of stuff. I can't even allow the physical presence of stuff keep me in a place of backwardsness to remind me of my past career in corporate finance and the income that came with that. Or to remind me of, you know, all this past stuff. And to place my identity in that. I can't stay in a place of what I thought things were going to be between me and him and they weren't. I can't stay in that place of backwardsness. Right? What I have to do is forget what lies behind and press forward to what lies ahead, to the upward call of Christ Jesus, right? It doesn't matter how good things used to be. It doesn't matter how good I used to have it. I can, just like Paul ran down his resume in Philippians 3, I can run down my resume right on this video right now, but I'm not going to do it because I had to get to the place where I counted all this rubbish for Christ and to move, for, move to Christ, right? And that's what we have to do. We have to let go of the what if, what should have been, what could have been, what I used to do, who I used to be, and become a blank slate for the Lord and allow him to rewrite your story. So that way you can move forward after a life interruption and become a single mom. So I pray that this has encouraged you. Um, I want to encourage you, if you have not already, to grab a copy of the book, Navigating the Impossible, A Survival Guide for Single Moms from Pregnancy Through the First Year of Motherhood. It is available on Amazon. So I highly recommend that you get it. It's amazing. And so it'll take you through, you know, the process of um, growing spiritually, financially, uh, restructuring your household, um, to just land well into single motherhood after experiencing an unplanned pregnancy. So again, grab a copy of your book, of this book. It is on Amazon. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, yeah. So make sure you like this video, love it, leave a comment, let me know how this has helped you, share it with a friend, and subscribe. Alrighty, thanks again for tuning in. Really appreciate you. Have a good one.